final leg. So we took a little bit of time off, about two weeks or so. Did have some great competitions that happened in between these past two weeks, some high quality on the track and the field. We're gonna jump into things a little bit heavy on the field today, but these were some great competitions. First off, Johannes Vetter from Germany. Of course, he's been one of the most dominant javelin throwers over the past couple seasons. This weekend though, out in Poland, he got out to a best of 97.76 meters. Not only a personal best, but the number two throw in the history of the javelin throw. Improves his personal best by three meters. Remember, he has a personal best of 94.44 meters, but this was also only 72 centimeters away from that world record. That world record set by Jans and Leslie all the way back in 1996. Now we see Vetter getting closer and closer to that world record. Also important to note, he had an auxiliary throw of 94.84 meters. So also ahead from his previous personal best, showing that he is very consistent and definitely is going to get closer and closer to that world record. I think he's still going to be the favorite going into Tokyo next year. There's still a lot of competition from other guys. Of course, his German co uh, countrymen are definitely going to be in competition there. But Johannes Vetter solidifying his spot at the top for now and definitely showing that he's going to be challenging for that world record as the seasons progress. Now let's jump over to the pole vault where we have to talk about Mondo Duplantis. Now back-to-back -back Diamond League competitions at Lausanne and in Brussels. First in Lausanne, he had an amazing duel going back and forth with Sam Kendricks. First off, Mondo Duplantis managed to jump 6.07 meters in that pole vault. That makes him the second best performer outdoors in the pole vault all time, only behind, of course, Sergei Buka. But Mondo Duplantis has been very consistent through the indoor and the outdoor season. So this is just another indication of where he's potentially going to go. He took a couple jumps at 6.15 meters, which would have been the outdoor world record, but unfortunately got too dark at the competition, so he had to shut things down. But also notable was Sam Kendricks as well behind him. Kendricks managed to jump 6.02 meters, his second best jump all time outdoors, and also the highest jump for a losing competitor in the pole vault in history. So great performances both by Mondo Duplantis and Sam Kendricks in Lausanne. Still with Mondo though, he followed things up in Brussels. Unfortunately, he didn't go higher. He managed to jump six meters flat. Again, took a couple jumps at 6.15 meters, wasn't successful, but this just shows that he is extremely consistent at the six meter barrier. Remember, that was like a high quality barrier that we were really surprised when someone got over six meters. Now, Mondo was just rolling over six meters like nothing. So he's definitely going to be the future of the pole vault. He's already got the indoor world record. He's definitely going to get that outdoor world record very, very soon. So keep a lookout for Mondo. Now let's finish things off in that field of events with Ryan Krauser. Now he has been having a great outdoor season. Remember back in July, he threw 22.91 meters, made him number three all time in the shot put. But here he had a great last couple weeks in the shot put. Three competitions and all of his throws have been over 22 meters. First off, he threw twice at Drake Relays. At the first day of the Drake Relays, managed to throw a best of 22.56 meters. Great, great consistency as well there. Like I said, all over 22 meters. The second day at Drake, he improved, got out to a best of 22.72 meters. So really significant improvement from the first day. He also had throws of 22.70, 22.63, and 22.68. So extremely amazing consistency there. Finally, this past weekend, he managed to throw out in Poland, getting out to a best of 22.70 meters. So again, Ryan Krauser, really just exemplary performances that we've been seeing over this past summer. He is now has 40 competitions where he has 22 meter throws or higher. He is the exemplar of consistency in this shot put. He is definitely going to be the likely favorite going into Tokyo. Of course, he's going to have some competition from Joe Kovas and Tom Walsh, but Ryan Krauser really showing that consistency and really showing he can throw very high at a great pace in the outdoor shot put. Now let's head back to the Brussels Diamond League. The real highlights here were there was one hour runs. Now this is a, an event that's not very often contested, but Safana San and Mo Farah were going for the world records in that one hour run on the track here in the men and the women's side. First off, Safana San, she had some competition from Bridget Kozgai, the world record holder in the women's marathon, but Safana San was able to hold her off, kick away in the final minutes. Safana San came away with the one hour world record of 18,000 
9,930 meters. Great performance for her, improved from the previous world record of 18,517 meters. So Safana San, she already has the world outdoor record in the mile. So this is just another record for her. And of course, with her double gold from Doha last year, she is the favorite going into Tokyo next year in whatever event she chooses to do. Now on Mofara's side in the one hour run, this was a little bit tougher of a record. Hali Geber Selassie was the world record holder in this event with 21,285 meters. So any Geber Selassie record is one that is definitely held to a high regard. But Mofara, he stuck it through, was a little bit behind pace for a little bit. His teammate Abdi managed to get the lead ahead of him for a little bit. But then Mofara was this signature kick. And this is actually his first time on the track in about three years since 2017. Managed to come away, get that world record, 21,333 meters. So improved the world record just by a little bit, but great performance. His actual first world record on the track or in any event for that matter. So great performance for Mofara. We're going to see him in the 10,000 meters on the track in the Tokyo Olympics. So keep a lookout for that. Now let's finish off with a couple other results that we saw over these past two weeks. Gemma Riki in that women's 800 meters out in Poland. She managed to get the world lead in the 800, one minute, 58.63 seconds. So great performance for her. She's been very consistent this outdoor season. Hopefully that translates into the Tokyo 2021 Olympic year next year. We also saw Matthew Ramsin from Australia in the men's mile competing out in Italy, got out to a world leading performance of three minutes, 51.23 seconds. Again, world leading performance, also some great competition right behind him. Really, really strong performance for him. Definitely one to look out for as we progress with that mile 1500 meter run. Finally, in the women's long jump, Nastasia Moronchuk Ivanova from Belarus in that long jump, she got out to a world lead of 6.94 meters. Now this improved her world leading performance by just a centimeter. So great consistency for her. We're going to see a lot more competition. Of course, with the off year, a lot of ladies are not competing in the long jump right now, but definitely look out for Ivanova when we get to Tokyo 2020 next year. All right. So those are just some of the highlights of competition from the past two weeks. Make sure you guys go in the comments below. Let me know any other performances that I might've missed or definitely some of the performances that you really thought were really important over these past two weeks. There's a few other competitions that we have coming up. The Doha Diamond League is definitely one to look out for and a couple other meets as well. So make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll be back again next time. Thanks.